Oh, we're back. New day, new video. Let's get straight to it, make my way over to my Discord and see which questions you guys have for me today. Ted die try ta 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 One Viking. Do you do drugs? No, officer, I do not. Never have, never will, and anything I'm about to say at her this point cannot be used against me in a card of law. I don't think that's how this actually works, but you know, legal disclaimer. So this is all for fictional purposes, obviously. But I can definitely say that I've diddled and dabbled with some things. A little bit of a backstory on, on me and my upbringing. Um, brought up in a blue collar conservative family. Perfect, amazing childhood. Best parents in the world. Uh, never even smoked a joint until age, I think like 20. Uh, never did anything besides alcohol uh, until after my second cancer. Um, I just, you know, that's how we were raised and it just wasn't an interest of mine. I was also very much into sports and the basketball. I was convinced I was going to go to the NBA, so drugs were not in that, um, in that state of mind. Now, after my second cancer, however, I do remember him thinking, I'm going to fucking die soon. <laughs> and I just started going over all of the things that I did not get to experience yet. You know, I was kind of like, not kind of, I was full on a bucket list status, meaning like, I'm going to die soon, so I better try and you know, experiment and experience these things, now I still have the chance. So I definitely um, had a phase where I went back to Barcelona, aka drug capital, <laughs> and uh, tried some things. I remember trying NDNA for the first time and thinking, this shit is like amazing. And I felt stupid for having drank alcohol all those years. Now, the thing about that is there is nothing like that first time. And I believe they call that chasing the silver dragon, meaning all the times after that first time you're trying to chase the silver dragon, you're trying to chase that initial experience and you can never quite match that again. So I did have an amazing experience that first time, but then I remember very quickly, um, obviously like, I was like, this is it, you know, I'm just gonna drink water, never drink again, and just take this stuff at parties. And it was pretty good for, for about four times. And then already the fifth and the sixth and the seventh time, it was pretty shitty, like it kind of ruined everything and for whatever reason I just started having a very adverse effect to it. So I remember one party, this is the uh, the electronic picnic, now it's called the Ranch in the Park in Barcelona, you can google it, it's the best party in the world in my opinion, it's a daytime party on Sundays. And I'm in Barcelona, I'm on a hill, I got my shirt off, I'm flexing in the sun, dancing to amazing electro music surrounded by beautiful people, getting my tapasito on, you know? And I just remember like being as happy as I could be. And then I had one of my Venezuelan friends uh, kind of like, you, you know, he's like, yo, you want some of this? And he offered me half a, or he offered me like a whole pill. I was like, oh, I don't really want the whole thing. Like, give me half. Mind you, I am already at the peak 
at the very summit of enjoyment at this point, before taking anything, right? I got some, some, I don't know, I don't remember who or what, but a beautiful human being grinding on me. I'm thinking, you know, like I just wanna sustain this. So I take half, thinking that I'm being smart, you know, like, oh, if I only take half, nothing bad can happen. And I remember talking to a person, you know, probably the person that I was dancing with. And at some point in the conversation, the, the, the you know, half the pill that I took, it hit me. And it hit me hard. And it was not in a good way. And I remember just thinking like, oh shit, this is not good. I'm going down fast. And I started feeling so weird and so uncomfortable at such a rapid rate that I had to quickly abort mission, go full Red October submarine status, and <laughs> just, you know, run away basically. I said something about having to go to the bathroom and I literally ran for the hill. So this particular setup of this party is, it's kind of like in this, um, you have like a, an actual, like, like a, yeah, something like a hill, like a ramp, a natural ramp you can kind of like lay back on to watch the party. And I ran up there, I remember I had a backpack with a cloth in it. In Barcelona everybody carries these like big Indian cloths with like elephant print and Buddhist prints on it. So I had like a cloth. Mind you, it's 33 degrees at this point. Full-blown Barcelona Spanish summer. And I was shivering cold, like having a panic attack, super paranoid, felt trapped in my own skin. So I wrapped myself in that cloth like a Jedi and just started rocking back and forth, looking at the party, praying for this horrible sensation to die off. Which obviously it didn't because it just, you know, because it had only just started. And I just remember spending the rest, the next couple, the next like four hours, literally sitting there on my hill, watching a spectacle, watching people having fun, and just asking myself, why? Why did I get so greedy? Why did I, you know, you know I was doing fine. Everything was fine. And that's really all you need to know about drugs, guys. Like, not just MDMA, but like cocaine and all that other shit. It's, it's pretty overrated. And yeah, the first couple of times it might be fun because it's new and you're going into it with, a, you know, like a blank mind. But then very quickly, it just ruins things. And I'm not even talking about the emotional come down of the days after. Like, even if you do have a good trip, which is very possible, like, it's not, you're not always gonna have a terrible trip like the one I had. But even if you have a good trip, it's like you're using your happiness and your enjoyment like a credit card. You're taking a loan out of your future happiness. Like even from a chemical point of view, you are taking the dopamine and the serotones that you have available for yourself in the next four days, literally like going to the bank and taking out a loan and you're spending all of that in the time frame of one day. So that one day you're, you know, you're, you're, you're euphoric, you're happy, you're on top of the world, but then, especially if you're a person like me, someone who's quite sensitive and very much in touch with his mind and body, you're gonna spend the next three to four days feeling absolutely soulless, feeling empty, depressed, and just like unable to do anything really. Like you're not, a, you're not gonna be creative, you're not gonna wanna be social, 
You're just gonna have to wait for your body to restock those happiness chemicals that you basically chugged all in one day. And it's just like, it's not a good deal. Like, let this be, you know, the realest thing you ever heard about drugs, because, you know, people that never took drugs, it's like, why would you really listen to their opinion, right? It's like, what do they know? But I did Coke, I did MDMA, I did ecstasy, which is basically the same thing. Um, that's about it, but let me tell you, it's not a good deal, it's not a good trade-off, and in the end, if I had 10 parties where I took it, maybe 4, four out of 10 parties ended up being better, but 6 out of 10 ended up just ruining the whole experience for me and leaving me and 10 out of 10 out of 10 left me with an emotional hangover that is just so so incredibly heavy on you like i cannot stress that enough like that come down in the next couple of days it's not worth it now i'm not gonna lie i have met people um, who are seemingly way less sensitive to these things. Like, that is a real thing. People exist um, who don't really, where it doesn't really have the same effect in terms of, like, the calm down. Like, <coughs> I have a friend who's fine the next day. Um, usually, in my experience, without judging, these people do tend to be people that are not really that emotionally in touch with themselves. Like they don't really have the highest EQ, which doesn't mean they're not intelligent. It's just that like, let me put it this way. It's usually people that if you would look at their playlist on Spotify or iTunes, they would not have had a single slow song in your playlist. Does that make sense? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's something that I also find out, found out, like, people that never listen to slow music, like a, like, anything from Adele, to some acoustic piano, to some Eno, to some whatever, like anything like slow and mellow, they exist. I've met them, and I have found there to be a strong correlation between that and and the lack of yeah um, emotion in general. So those are the type of people. If this sounds familiar to you, if you never listen to slow, sad, emotional music, then you're probably not gonna have such a hard time with the calm down. That's not to say that you should start doing drugs. I'm just informing you and keeping it real from my observations that there is a clear distinction. Um, on that note, that also took me years when I was a teenager. I remember the biggest cause, I suffered a lot from anxiety and depression and it seemed to occur around the age of 15, 16, the same exact age when I started drinking alcohol on the weekends. And I could never quite figure it out. I would get drunk with my friends and I would feel so bad and so down the next couple of days. And I would always tell my friends like, man, I'm so hungover, I feel so bad. And they would be like, yeah, yeah, me too, me too. And then like, I would see them do something or say something and that would make me go like, but this doesn't make sense. Like, I could never do that, what you're doing right now, or I could never say that. You know what I mean? And I just never got it. And I just always kind of figured that there was something wrong with me. Like, well, we're both hungover, but why am I being such a bitch? Why am I so emo? Why am I so sad? Like, what's wrong with me? And it took me years to figure out, like, something so... So obvious, obviously now, but it took me years to figure out that 
my hangover is not your hangover. And people, we just like, we're so limited by language and vocabulary. We just like stick the same labels on things. So like, you know, one person, if I'm telling you I'm hungover, it means like, I'm legitimately sad, unmotivated. I'm doubting myself on everything. I don't really want to see people. That's why I don't really drink a lot because the price I have to pay the next day is so incredibly high. Now, someone else's hangover is literally just like having a headache, you know, having a little bit of an upset stomach, and that's it. They never go in that territory of having like dark thoughts and all that. And it just, it took me so long to figure out like, we are so different and that's why, you know, like, I finally figured that out around, I want to say 21, <laughs> took me a long time. And that's when I finally, like, basically got back on drinking um, a lot. Because I finally figured out, like, I can't do this. And just because someone else can, doesn't mean that I can. And yeah, the same goes for drugs. Like, if you are completely, like, if you're one of those people that doesn't really live in the realm of emotions, then it's a different story. Like, I'm not even gonna tell you, like, not to do it, because I know a bunch of people that get away with it, and they're functioning perfectly fine, and they're not drug addicts at all. Uh, the thing is, if you're that type of person, you're probably not watching this video. Like, there's a very small chance that someone who is not into those type of things would still be interested in what I'm saying at this point because I think I'm speaking about something very specific, very niche, and I think the majority of my audience has a very high emotional EQ because you guys can actually relate to the things I'm saying. Like, you, you feel what I'm talking about, if that makes sense. So, if you're still watching this video at this point and because because you're interested then i can tell you with a pretty high accuracy and certainty that drugs probably are not for you they really aren't um that being said i do like marijuana i do like wheat um not wake and bake, not all day. I'm not saying, like, I'm not really with the whole, like, smoking all day type of stuff. Again, it depends on person to person, but I've seen what that can happen. I've seen what that can do to people. But I do feel like if you want something to take the edge off after a long and stressful day, and you want to relax, that moment where a lot of people turn to alcohol, if you'd rather, you know, not drink, not put unnecessary calories in your body, and you'd rather take a few puffs from the magic stick, I really can't fault you. Like, I really can't say anything negative about that because I do enjoy that myself as well. And on top of that, the thing what I like about weed is that it just gives you like this third eye it allows you to peek behind the curtain of reality and it allows you to to really think and look at life from an entirely different perspective. Alcohol just kind of pumps you up. Alcohol just makes you feel like you can do anything, gives you uh, a, an incredible amount of self-confidence and it just pushes you to take more risks and chances in the moment but it doesn't really like gives you these grand epiphanies whereas weed weed takes away the ego um, and that's why I always feel like I also feel like weed has actually made me a better person over the years it has allowed me to revise social situations things that I did things that I said and look at them critically, you look at myself critically, and it allowed me to realize that in many of those, you know, often I was wrong or I did or said something inappropriate, um, which otherwise I never would have concluded. So that plus 
the creative aspect of weed, which definitely um, triggers your ability to be creative and think of concepts and come up with ideas, which translates to this, you know, to me creating YouTube videos, to me creating opinions, and me just creating an overall philosophy for life, um, which I'm literally sharing with you guys uh, in this very moment. So, there's a lot more pros to weed, in my opinion, but that does not mean, still, that you should just indulge never black and white, never left or right, guys. Balance is the key. Like, you have to remain disciplined and less is more. I know it's such a goddamn cliche, but less is more basically applies to everything in life. Everything. Love, money, career, drugs, food, you know, like, happiness, sadness, like, all of it, like, less is truly more. So, um, I say all that to say, there is a time and a place for everything. If you do want to experiment with certain things, then make sure you're doing them you're doing, you're doing it with good people that you can actually trust. Um, and again, less is more. Start off slow. Because even me, I thought I was starting off slow by only going half, and it still ruined my day. So, go real slow. <laughs> so yeah, that's about it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the thumbs up. And if you have a topic or a question that you would like me to discuss, then you can make your way over to my Discord channel. The link is below this video. Go to the Q&A section and ask me anything. And I'll make a video. That's it. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with more content. Peace out. Hi, my name is Spencer. I'm a filmmaker from Chicago. I'm a person who struggled with anxiety, OCD, and mild depression for most of my life. I've seen many therapists and tried many different medications. Uh, recently, I was kind of looking for something more to get more motivated, to get more things done. And I had just come across uh, Lorenza's YouTube channel. I just started binge watching and I became so inspired about his attitude, the way he goes about things, and he just seems so genuine, so intelligent, and I just decided to reach out because I thought if he could make it through everything that he had made it through and be succeeding so well now that he must know something. And I can safely say he does. He's so much different than any other therapist I had seen before. I felt like a more of a connection. I felt that everything that he was talking about with me was from experience that he had and not just something that he learned in a book. And I think that's the biggest difference that I could, I could honestly say. So he's helped me so much with motivation, organizing my life, more confidence. And the biggest thing is to live in the moment. And I really appreciate what I have and who I'm with and what I'm doing when I'm doing it. And that was something I've never done before. So once again, I would like to highly recommend Lorenz, aka Wounded Viking. Please hit him up for life coaching.